and how to draw the sphere cylinder cube and the relationship on how shadow plays in these shapes. So right now we're going to do the easiest one. Let's do it over here on this side. Let's just say that the sun is hitting here and the light source is hitting this way. So then let's go ahead and do a cube, which is the easiest shape. It's a very geometric shape where we go ahead and do a simple box. Now, since the light source is sitting here, let's call this a number one light source, which is the highest highlight. Number two is going to be right here, which is the uh, bit of a shade from the number one, which is the highest highlight. This is going to be a little bit of a tint. Number three will be on this side. Number four, which will be your darkest dark, is going to be hitting out this way in this shape. And number four will be your darkest dark. So a real quick gradation scale. If you want to draw a very long rectangular bar, if this was going to be a number one, two, three, and a number four being the darkest dark, let's just say my darkest area is going to be pitch black to however darkness your pencil can create. And what we're gonna do is do a gradation scale blending from this darkness to pure white. So what we wanna do is blend this into pure whiteness. You see how it goes from very light, which is your highest highlight, to number two, which is a slight tint, to number three, which is a darker tint, to a number four, which is your darkest dark. So with that, let's do the number one. We're going to leave that white. And number two, we're going to just do a slight shade of this. And that's okay if you leave that open right there. If you want to, let's just butt it up against to that line. Now, number three, is it going to be lighter or darker than number two? It should be darker than number two. So then this one, we have to put down a little bit of a heavier weight on our pencil to go ahead and create that to be darker. And we can go over it several times, but just keep in mind that it's not gonna be our darkest tint. And number four, which is gonna be the shadow here, needs to be the darkest. And let's just put a number four here so we know the number four is gonna be a darker tint. And don't worry about having to uh, move your paper around to kind of get the really nice clean lines by all means, please go ahead and move your paper around to see what works. I'm left-handed, so I am moving it all over the place to get some really nice lines. And I am just using a regular number two pencil and a white sheet of paper. And there you go. You have your cube, and right after your cube, the next best shape to go ahead and do is going to be a sphere. Now a sphere is like a ball or uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and do like a, a um, almost like a marble ball because it's going to reflect light. And if you don't make a perfect circle, that's okay. I just kind of do a few circles around here till I get my shape correctly. That's somewhat of a decent ball there. So now we're going to go ahead and then again, look at how the light source is going to hit it. So the light source, so this is going to be a number one on this side. Number two is going to be right in here. Then a the number three is going to be darker. Number four is going to be the drop shadow. And 
and I am kind of guessing how, if I had a ball in front of me, where the shadow would be hitting, it'd be casting out this way because the light's hitting this way, so there's gonna be a shadow over on this end. So what I end up wanting to do, first and foremost, is going ahead and not touching this area whatsoever. But what I wanna do instead is create almost like a moon right here. And this one you can get kind of creative in your cross hatching. You see, but I do not touch the outer area of this sphere. So let me darken this up just a little bit here so you can see that I am not touching the edge of the sphere. And you see how I created just a very thin moon. Now, when I start creating that thin, you can start just going over just oh so slightly, little by little darkening up that area but not too dark that it becomes a number four you want to make sure it remains the tone of a number three which is this tone right here because as we kind of create this to make it look like it's round it, we're going to go to a number two and then eventually blend into a number one which is the color of the paper so however way you feel you need to do to create those different shades and tents, uh, you can go ahead and do some cross hatching, which is line work coming in. Bring it over here. Do the same over here. But be careful that it does not come all the way into a number one. Remember, we're gonna leave that to be the color of the paper. So then little by little, lighter cross hatching you can get into that number two and try to make it blend. Do your best to just go very light. I'm not putting any pressure whatsoever. I'm just letting the weight of the pencil. And remember, I'm just keep on going back and forth, back and forth to kind of still hold that shape of a moon. I'm still trying to create that moon shape shading there. So try not to disfigure that moon. And if you kind of like what you have right there, then I would recommend going ahead and darkening this bottom part just a little bit so there's a little variation between this darkness going into light and then even lighter. So what you want to do, why, the reason why I left this open is that is the reflection of the tabletop. So if this is the tabletop, then there's a reflection of the white tabletop bouncing off of the sphere. You'll see right now how it all comes together because this is going to be the darkest part, which is what? A number four is going to be your darkest area. And once you butt these two together, both the drop shadow and the sphere, the object, you want to have a nice clean line to not intersect or get that muddy inside of there. You want to keep it nice and clean. The edges as well, you want to go ahead and have those edges nice and clean. If you go over, that's quite all right. Let's go over it like this because not all shadows are, drop shadows are nice and clean. So we're just wanting to go through this exercise so that you understand the properties of shading, dimension, depth, gradation, and practice that. If by any chance you, your sphere looks a little bit like an egg, that's okay, we're close to Easter, so that's not a problem. Eggs are well received right here at this point. So in a nutshell, that's pretty much what it should look like. 
Now you can go ahead and darken this area just a little bit there. Make sure you do not make it into a number four, but little by little, the key thing to do is to be very patient and make sure you're more than welcome. Remember to rotate your paper so that you can blend things a little bit better. I don't like to smudge my fingers in there because as you can kind of see, I'm left-handed and I started from my left side, went this way, and then the bottom of my hand gets really dirty. So if you are left-handed and you're getting a lot of smudges like I am here, you're more than welcome to put a piece of paper here to not smudge all of this area here. But for the instructional purpose, we're just gonna go ahead and get nice and dirty and see how this comes out. The other shape that I would recommend you uh, exercising is the cylinder. And that's it, we're not able to see it because how we're placing these on our tabletop is this is to the left, this is a little bit more in front, and this is in the background. So there's a little bit of a layer here um, and we're just gonna make this going off the page. And again, how the light source is hitting, the top part is gonna be your number one. Then there's different variations that are gonna be happening here where we're gonna get streaks. A streak here that's gonna be probably a number two. And then as we get rounded off here, a uh, number three, it's probably gonna be right about here. So that's gonna be a little bit darker. And remember, it's a round object, so you don't wanna, you wanna have a little bit of an area between the edge of the cylinder and the reflection playing off of the tabletop. And since this is a number three, shading that we're doing, Remember, and now we're also gonna be reflecting up against the number, the actual top area where the number one, we wanna keep that nice and clean. And I'm just flickering as it gets darker down below, it could be a little bit darker because this sphere is blocking the shade or actually the light source here. So you, you can down below here, make it a little bit darker, but remember that a number two is supposed to be here. Number two shadow shading here and right here, this is gonna be a number three. So that has to be, this streak or reflection has to be darker than that one. So this is a number two, this is a number three. So number three is gonna be darker, so we're gonna make that a little bit darker. And there could be some other little streaks that are kind of coming with the reflection of that. And then over here as well, as we get to the edge, that becomes also dark in this area. And we can kind of give some little hash marks there to kind of give it that feeling that it's a round object. So that makes it pretty decent that we kind of get the idea that it is a round object and kind of going around this way almost like a drum. And then if you wanted to, you can still kind of create a little bit of a darkness here. And then remember, once you start getting into the shadow, what number is the shadow, the drop shadow? It's gonna be your darkest dark. So yes, that's gonna be your number four. And with this one, since it's tall, what you can do to kind of give it just a little bit more life than these guys, you see how we did a solid here? With this edge, it became very dark. This edge, we made it a little bit dark, but slightly blended into a number three here. With this one, we can also just 
let it blend into a number three as well as we go and get off the page. And that gives it somewhat of a little realistic look that it's coming off the page and the shadow is vanishing into a number three. So I'm gonna stop it there and we'll see what that came out look like.